The Bat Family is the term used to describe Batman and his close associates, such as Catwoman, the Robins, Batgirl, Batwoman, and so on, just the core group that work close to a Batman. And this group is ever expanding, but for the most part, the members don't have any superpowers. There are a few exceptions to this, but most of the members depend on their martial art training, their intellect and skills to win a fight. But over the years, some of these non-powered Bat Family members have been given superpowers in certain stories. They usually lose these powers soon after gaining them, because, as I said, one of the main features of the Bat Family is that they don't have any meta powers. But this video is going to look at five separate times in which the Bat Family members have been given superpowers. Now, I have already done a video on the five times that Batman has gotten superpowers, a link to which is in this video's description. So this video will focus solely on the other members of the Bat Family and will not feature Batman at all. Number five, Damian Wayne's Chaos Shard powers. Damian Wayne died fighting his clone, Heretic, who was genetically engineered to adulthood and made to be stronger than Damian. Most of the prototypes died quickly, but I survived. I was the strongest of them all. And after he died, Batman tried everything he could to bring him back to life, before finally accepting his death. But then Batman found a way to resurrect Damien using a Chaos Shard. Now the story of how Batman brought Damian Wayne back to life with this Chaos Shard is quite complicated, and there is a link in this video's description for the full story, but I'm just going to go over the broader strokes of it in this video. And basically, Batman touches the Chaos Shard crystal that gives him a vision of how to resurrect his son. And this vision shows him that he has to go to Apocalypse, get the Chaos Shard back, get it charged up with Darkseid's Eye Blast energy, and then bring it back home and stab Damian Wayne with this shard. And stabbing Damian Wayne with the shard brought Damian back to life, which was the aim of Batman's mission. But it also had the unexpected side effect of supercharging his body with the Chaos Shard energy, and this gave him superpowers. And because of this, Damien could fly, was super strong and invulnerable, and was loving every minute of it, as any kid with superpowers like this would. And any adult as well, if we're being honest. However, these powers were not permanent. Damien had them because of the excessive amounts of energy that the Chaos Shard had put inside him. But this energy was only a finite amount, and the more Damien Wayne used his powers, the more that energy went down, until it was depleted completely. And Damien Wayne once again became powerless. Well, with that being said, he is still a master at martial arts and killing people, so he's not completely powerless, but he has no superpowers anymore. Number 4. Alfred Becomes the Outsider In Detective Comics number 328, Alfred saves Batman and Robin from being crushed by a boulder. Unfortunately, Alfred gets hit by the boulder instead, and he dies. Or at least that is what Batman and Robin think, and they do bury him and he is not seen for several issues. However, later on in Detective Comics, Brandon Crawford detects a very faint sign of life coming from Alfred's body, as Alfred's willpower is keeping him partially alive. And using an experimental machine of Brandon Crawford's own design, he is able to bring Alfred back to life. But although the machine brings him back to life, it also mutates his cells as well as regenerating them, and Alfred's skin becomes more like stone, making him super tough and giving him high levels of strength, and it also gives him telekinetic power. Now, this is not like the normal superpower of telekinesis, where people can control objects and move them around with their mind. In Alfred's version of this, he can only control objects that he has previously touched, and sadly his mind is altered as well, and it almost seems to poly inverse his thoughts. And since his last thoughts were of saving Batman and Robin, these thoughts are now reversed, and he now wants to kill Batman and Robin. So he names himself the Outsider, and becomes a supervillain for the dynamic duo to fight. However, Batman and Robin are able to figure out that he is Alfred by matching his fingerprints. Now, how exactly his fingerprints are still the same when all of his skin was altered and turned into this stone-like substance, well, that's a bit of a mystery and a bit of a plot hole. But putting that plot hole aside, Batman is able to use the machine that resurrected Alfred to put Alfred back to normal, though he has no memory of the event, which is probably for the best since he was trying to murder those closest to him. And interestingly enough, in the storyline Forever Evil, in which there is an alternate Earth that pretty much everyone who's good is bad and everyone who's bad is good, meaning the Justice League are evil and a lot of the supervillains are actually heroes, there is also an alternate version of Bruce Wayne. And instead of being Batman, he is now Owlman, and he has a butler of his own who is called The Outsider. Which seems to be a little easter egg reference to the time that Alfred, in the main DC Universe, became The Outsider. 
It might not be and could just be a coincidence, but I doubt it since this is comics and it's almost certainly a reference. Number 3. The Injustice Pills In the Injustice universe, there are pills that give people super strength. How can a pill allow- Kryptonian nanotech. Increases the tensile strength of bone and tissue by several thousand percent. These pills were made by Lex Luthor using Kryptonian technology that he got from Superman. Because in the Injustice universe, Superman and Lex Luthor were actually best friends before Superman became evil. Unlike your Luthor, I've never indulged in lawbreaking. Superman doesn't suspect his best friend is funding the insurgency. Now, Luthor told Superman that he was going to make these super pills to help Superman build an army of superpowered individuals to enforce his peace. But in fact, he actually made them to give to the Resistance, so the Resistance would have the tools and the power they needed to be able to fight Superman, as he knew that the Resistance was mainly made of normal humans without superpowers, and they were significantly outclassed by Superman's team in terms of raw power, since they had Black Adam, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, and so many others, all of whom had superpowers. And so without these pills making the non-powered individuals stronger and tougher, then they would all be dead in seconds if they actually fought any of the superpowered heroes for real. And in the Injustice games, these pills are taken by pretty much everyone who doesn't already have superpowers, including Batman, Damian Wayne, Catwoman, Batgirl, and my personal favourite, Alfred. Because there is a moment in the Injustice Time comic book when Superman and Batman are fighting in the Batcave. And Superman is beating Batman pretty badly, because at this point Batman hasn't taken one of the super pills and is just a normal human. And the fight goes so far that Superman actually breaks Batman's spine, and then pokes him to inflict more pain to torture him for information. It's pretty messed up. But then Alfred takes a strength pill and walks over to Superman and nuts him unconscious. It is one of the most badass moments in comic book history, and quite possibly Alfred's best moment ever. And out of all of the powers on this list, this is the one that is given to the most members of the Bat family. And in the video game, if you take one of these pills, you seem to have these powers for pretty much forever. Though in the comic books, they wear off after a short amount of time. Number 2. Dick Grayson's Healing Factor Anyone who's read the Dark Knight Strikes Again comic book will know that it's a pretty insane comic book and that the Batman in it is not as honourable as the main continuity Batman. He is a harsher, more brooding Batman, who has previously rejected Dick Grayson as his Robin and as his son, because he claims that this Dick Grayson is weak and a failure. And being rejected by Batman and pretty much thrown out onto the street, combined with all the previous grief in his life, such as watching his parents die right in front of him, this all sent Dick Grayson pretty nuts. So nuts that he agreed to have gene altering treatments conducted on him to make him stronger. And these treatments gave him his incredible healing powers, that are so strong that even when Batman chops off his head, he is able to catch it, stick it back on his neck, and it heals back onto his body instantly. Which means he has a healing factor that pretty much puts Wolverines and Deadpools to shame. However, even though he has these incredible healing powers and is presumably immortal because most people with healing powers tend not to age, it still doesn't save his life. Although Batman is unable to cut him or even chop off his head and kill him, he is able to figure out that Dick Grayson's healing powers will only work so long as there is a piece of Dick Grayson left to heal, meaning he drops Dick Grayson into a boiling lake of lava and fries every cell in his body, killing him. So technically he actually retains his powers, which is unlike most of the Bat family members. Number 1. Again we have Dick Grayson. In the Injustice universe, Dick Grayson dies having been killed, sort of by accident, by Damian Wayne. For the full story, check out the links in this video's description. But after Dick Grayson dies, his story doesn't actually end. Although he doesn't feature in the Injustice Time comic book for quite a while, he does eventually come back as the new Dead Man. Now, for those who don't know, Deadman is a spirit and superhero who has the power to roam the earth, but he can't be seen or heard by anybody. However, he can possess the living. What are you doing here? I'm calling security. I'll make sure the looky loos stay out of our hair. And after Deadman is killed, again, because apparently a ghost can be killed so long as you have magical powers. He then chooses Dick Grayson to be his successor, and Dick Grayson agrees and takes over as the new dead man, and he now has the same powers, meaning he can roam the world as a spirit and see pretty much anywhere, and he's able to possess the living. And although he didn't feature in the Injustice 2 video game, it would be really cool if they could include him in the third Injustice game as dead man. 
I'm not sure he could be a playable character as Dead Man, since he can't be seen or heard in his ghost form, but he could still feature in the game's campaign story. Or they could have a flashback of Dick Grayson to when he was alive, so that he would be a playable character in the actual game, and then have him as the ghost Dick Grayson later on, because it would kind of be cool to see Dick Grayson as Dead Man. And so far in the Injustice universe, Dick Grayson hasn't died, yet again, and still roams having these powers, so it's perfectly possible for him to be in the future games. And that is five times that the Bat Family members have gained superpowers. Though I feel I should mention that there is also the character Duke, who is a member of the Bat Family who has meta powers, which involve him being able to control light to a certain extent, and possibly other abilities that will come out in the future, as he hasn't actually learned a great deal about his abilities at this point because he's only just discovering them himself. However, I'm not including him in this list because he is meant to be a metahuman, meaning he wasn't a normal human who somehow gained powers and then lost them. He has them permanently as part of his character. So he doesn't really fit this list, though he does still deserve a mention because he is a Bat Family member with meta powers. And there is also Clayface, who is basically a giant sentient mound of clay that can shapeshift into any shape and any person. He also seems to be functionally immortal as he can be chopped up into pieces and still put himself back together. And he seems to now be a member of the Bat Family in the New Rebirth comics. But same as Duke, he already has superpowers to begin with, as a large part of his character, and who he is, so he doesn't really count for this list. Although incidentally, there is also a Clayface member in the The Batman TV series, who when he was normal was actually a friend of Batman's. Yo Bruce! Hey Ethan! Where you been my friend? Who was then later on tortured by the Joker and mutated into Clayface. <laughs> And this sent him kind of nuts and he was actually a supervillain for a while. But then he came back to join the Bat family in a way, as he wanted to use his powers for good. The criminal isn't who I am. I'm ready to pay for my crimes. So in this he is actually a member of the Bat family with superpowers. Although in this as well he also gives these powers up and becomes a normal human being. No Bat! The antidote! What?! It's not really related to this list, but I thought it was worth a mention because it does relate to Clayface, who, like I said, seems to now be a member of the Bat family. And personally, I think the best power on this list is the Injustice pills, as they don't give the Bat family too much power, as too much power takes away the challenge of a hero's life and makes them rather boring to read or watch. So although they don't get too much power from these pills, they do get enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most powerful metahumans on the planet, but they still need their training and skills to win, as the power of these pills won't do it alone. And of course, it allows non-powered humans to fight super-powered people in the Injustice video game, which is why they invented them in the first place. But what is your favourite superpower on this list? And do you think that there are any other times the Bat family has gotten superpowers that should have been mentioned instead? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.